Today's review is on Fury Beast Stormer 220. And in my opinion, this is the best looking one yet. Like the name states, this is a 220mm mini drone. From the specs alone, it looks like it's going to be quite the performer. 2308 motors, that's the biggest one yet for me. However, it's a lower KV motor, so I'm not entirely sure how it's going to perform, but I guess we'll have to see after a few flights. Let's jump right in and see what's all included. The first thing you're going to notice is the box. A lot nicer than your typical Fury B boxing, which is just a plain brown box. Let's just hope this doesn't affect the quad's price. Not really much to this one. We get two full sets of 5042 tri-blade props. Two Velcro straps and a rubber mat. A Pagoda antenna with an RPSMA connector. A run cam action camera mount. And... And... And of course, the Stormer 220. No doubt, it's a great looker, and I'll always be a fan of carbon fiber and aluminum, but I kind of wish they would start using different colors. Maybe some blue, red, or even an all black version. I think it would just be nice to get some variety in there. One other thing I think can be changed or improved is the weight. The past few releases have been a bit on the heavy side. They're great drones otherwise, but I think the power and even flying experience would improve if they could reduce the weight. Now let's take a couple of measurements. The Stormer by itself, well, with prop nuts. And with the antenna. I'm not sure why it's zoomed in, so let's zoom out real quick. And now with the battery strap, the rubber mat, and of course the props. Alright, now let's take a couple measurements on the frame. The top plate is 2 millimeters. In between the center plate and the top plate, you have 28.2 millimeters. The arms measure 4 millimeters thick. Here we see the arms are sandwiched in between two plates. The measurement of that is 7.8 millimeters. Both the upper and lower plates measure 2 mm thick. The side plates are also 2 mm thick. And now to the components, starting with the motors. These are Fury B's 2308 brushless motors. They are 2200 kV, which is a little disappointing. The lower kV may be good for lower amp draw, which results in less voltage sag and possibly longer flight times. But the unfortunate part is a lower KV motor does equal less power. With the Stormer being as heavy as it is, I personally would have went with a higher KV motor. They are otherwise a good set of motors. The build quality from what I'm seeing is very good. And from what it shows on the product page, sounds like it's constructed with some quality parts. And because of its size, it's also pretty heavy. Each motor weighs 38 grams a piece which puts it among some of the heaviest motors that were meant for mini drones. These motors are stated to run 3 to 6 cell lipos, which is definitely something you don't see every day. Most motors are rated for 3 to 4 cells, which I think is just a precaution. People have been running higher voltages past the motor specs for as long as I remember. I mean, as long as the motors don't get scorching hot, you really should be fine. I ran the Stormers 2308 on a 5S and the motors were at most warm. So I definitely don't think it's a gimmick. The motor wires are heat shrunk and stay in place so you don't have to worry about them getting caught up in the props. And next up we're going to have a look at the frame. This is a combination of CNC aluminum along with high grade carbon fiber. I think this frame can definitely take a beating. The carbon that they use are all ultra stiff. I mean really. If you have any of Fury B's drones released in the past 6 months, try it. I don't think it bends even in the slightest. Never mind, I guess there was a slight bend. But you really do have to put some pressure on it. I mean, it really is very stiff. The Stormer 220's got a bit of weight to it. I think this may have to do with the heavy motors. And the frame's pretty thick too. These are the two biggest factors when it comes to the weight. I think there's been an improvement in the quality of Chinese made frames for sure. Unlike frames from a year ago where the carbon plates would be cut with worn out bits resulting in bad cuts with leftover burrs, these are completely clean and if you look at the arms you can see that they even beveled the edges. Very nice touch. 
included in this kit is actually a foam mat. I think I called it a rubber mat earlier. The foam material actually does a good job preventing the battery from sliding around. The camera on this quad is a Fury B HS1177, not to be confused with Foxeer's HS1177. This is a 600 TVL CCD camera. It's got a 2.5mm lens and has a 130 degree field of view. I thought the picture quality was good, good detail, good color, and the field of view was perfect. Another good thing about the camera is there's a built-in OSD toggle on the back of the camera. You will have to remove the top plate, but at least you don't have to carry any extra parts around if you ever need to change the camera settings. The flight controller is an Omnibus F4 Plus, and the plus is because it actually has a built-in VTX. Let's remove the top plate so we can get a better look. Be careful when removing the SMA connector, it is possible to rip the wire out. Alright, with the top plate off, here is the Omnibus F4. This thing runs Betaflight 3.2 and it's really not set up, so you gotta get in there and configure the settings yourself. It took me a while to figure this out, but the receiver is set to the wrong UART port, or the one that I received was. You could plug the receiver into the correct port, or better yet, just go under the ports tab and select the right port, uh, which is UART 1. All connections between the three boards here are using connectors. Uh, I think it just makes things easier and more convenient if you ever need to take it apart. And for black box logging, we have a micro SD card slot that is easy to access on the side. The built-in VTX is a 5.8 GHz power switcher from 25, 100, and 200 milliwatts, and there are 48 available channels. Unfortunately, there is no smart audio or telemetry from the VTX, so to change the VTX settings, you will use the buttons on the board. I thought the video quality was actually really good. I really didn't see much noise at all, although that did change a bit when I started messing with the D-term, but for the most part, the picture was clear. And the last piece of hardware is the ESC. It's a 35 amp 4-in-1 BL Heli S ESC. It arrives with firmware 16.6. .6, and you can run both boards, that's the flight controller and the ESC, at 8K gyro and 8K PID loop rates, running DSHOT 600. Now, let's check out some flying. First we're going to do some line of sight and then we'll do some more FPV. I think the power is good, but like I said before, uh, when you compare it to the other Fury B drones, the Stormer is probably the least powerful of the bunch. But again, it is not a weak drone. I think for most, this will be plenty of power. Motors feel very smooth. Flying it around in line of sight, it flies great. Motors feel super smooth, everything feels precise great throttle response, I mean everything is very responsive. It's not until I fly this thing in FPV that I started to notice some issues which I'll explain during the FPV portion. Obviously flight times are going to vary since there are a lot of factors that come into play like the battery size, all up weight, the props, how hard you fly, temperature, battery health, you get the point. On a 4 cell 1500 milliamp LiPo, I average flight times of 3 minutes and 10 seconds and this is going from 16.8 volts all the way down to 14.5 volts. I forgot to mention this earlier but the Stormer does not come tuned at all. It uses Betaflight stock tune which for most people will fly perfectly fine but for some pitch and roll will feel very sluggish. So to fix this, just bump up the rates until you reach a satisfactory feel.
uh, I didn't notice just when I was flying line of sight. In fact, it flew great. It wasn't until I started flying FPV that I noticed the issues. I guess the best way to describe it is it feels a bit loose. The thing is, it doesn't always feel loose. From time to time, the quad will overshoot. It feels like it will pitch a bit more or it will roll a bit more. And another thing is when dropping the throttle down to zero, the nose would pitch forward and or pitch downwards. Almost like the motor stopped spinning. The bottom line is this quad will require some fine tuning. Anyways, if I ever get the tune down, I'll be sure to post another video. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you guys back in the next one. See ya. Darling Darling